lots of notes, so I might be here a while. You got one minute, buddy. <laughs> I can talk fast. Um, morning. My name is Rob Johnson. Um, one thing I noticed, since we're changing things up a little bit here, um, mine really doesn't have anything to do with what is going on in the legislature right now, but what could have happened and should happen. We're always talking about, we need more money for this, we need more money for that. I think I've been coming to this for four or five years. I guarantee that's the topic 80% of the time. One of the things South Dakota doesn't do a good job is monetizing some of their assets. So full disclosure, I'm a partner in a company called Dakota Plains Energy. We're wind farm developers. We did a $173 million wind farm up by Pollock, finished in 2015. It's probably the largest construction project in South Dakota that year <clears throat> that nobody ever heard of. Every 1,000 megawatts of power, which every a megawatt's 300 houses of, to do uh, to power. For every 1,000 megawatts, the state collects about 15 million dollars in tax taxes every year. Right now, South Dakota has 989 megawatts at an investment of two billion dollars. North Dakota, we're the fifth windiest state, by the way, in the country. North Dakota is number six as far as wind. They've got about 3,000 megawatts, $6 billion worth of investment. Minnesota, 3,500 megawatts, $7 billion in investment. Iowa is less wind than South Dakota. They've got $14 billion in investment. That's all tax money going to the state. And we don't have the incentives. I get it. But there is a lot of frivolous, a lot of frivolous bills coming out, impeding things. Uh, one is House Bill 1226. They wanted to change the setbacks from a house, a road, or a property line to basically where it's at right now is about 600, no, less than 1,000 feet. They wanted to move it about uh, 7,900 feet. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, the problem is, is, is it's scaring off a lot of guys. We're the only South Dakota-based wind farm company left, utility-scale big ones. All the big ones that come and look at our state, they say these guys keep changing the rules on us, and they won't spend the money. That's why you don't see much here. There's a few here and there, but we're way behind the eight ball. We're leaving a ton of money on the table, and there's reasons that they have, and I can argue with people all day. I'm going to talk fast now, really. Um, Health, property values, all this, I've heard it all, refuted it all. There's been tons of studies by MIT, University of California, Berkeley, um, everything you can think of. People throwing rocks, and it's all been disproven, but it's still out there. So I just want to suggest maybe for summer studies, we should look at it. I think it's ridiculous that nobody's pursuing it right now. We haven't pushed on our sideline on that, but we're kind of the only game in the state right now. The other guys don't have a vested interest. Thank you. Carl, I'm sorry. Uh, Caleb, Caleb and I are on the House uh, Commerce and Energy Committee, and we voted against the setback. That's all I need to say. No, I appreciate that, Carl. I know, I know you guys, and I appreciate that. My point being is that that's one of those things, frivolous feels that should never come up. Because there's, yep. no, there's no real reason to do that. So anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to make a speech, but since we're changing it up, once every five years, I figure I can get up talk. Thanks. All right, thanks, Rob. Next.